Hello, can you guess the manufacturer of the product I'm reviewing today? I'll give you a clue, there, and here, and here on the back. If you send me stuff, I will unashamedly wear it. Although my wife tells me red's not my colour. Yes, we got a product from HDLRC today, and it's a follow-up to one of the parallel charging boards I've been using for a while, called the Thor. This is the Thor, and I use it on a daily basis when I'm charging batteries. Really good, feels very safe way of using it. Had four inputs. Uh, of XT30 or XT60 and it has this discharge thing at the end but it's really really slow I can't really recommend that so what they've done they've come up with this and it's a six port version which looks like this here's the old one here's the new one slightly easier to sort out when you've only got three in a row I do find that sometimes especially if you've got shorter balance leads it it can be quite tricky putting everything in there um, also in the box you get the extension leads which go in here and connect your charger some brief instructions and of course some stickers so this video I, I suspect is going to be very similar to this one so I thought what I'd talk about is how to do balance charging what you need to do how to do it safely some of the features this has to do it safely and uh, we'll, we'll go through that because quite handy um, if you've only got a, a basic single port charger and you know you want to go out and, and rip 12 batteries and that's like you know about something like 10 hours worth of charging unless you get something like this because most chargers even basic ones will be able to charge at a rate much higher than your batteries and when you connect things in parallel you can basically it's like making one big battery you can charge at a much higher um, ampage so all the batteries do at once anyway let's go to close up we'll talk about the safety features of this what we have to do, what we have to check with our batteries most importantly to make sure we're safe to do it, how we go about connecting things, how to check for problems, and uh, then we'll we'll get six batteries together and, and give them a charge. Let's do it. Okay, here's the charging close-up, and I've connected the balance and XT60 lead. If you're thinking, hey, why is this like for 6S? I might not be charging 6S. Well, it's it's just the fact that it connects all the wires to your charger, so you can use anything from 2 to 6S and that doesn't matter. So as said, you've got six ports, each has an XT60 and an XT30 connection. These are 15 amp fuses, so if you get a sudden rush of current, that should pop before it goes to the battery. And what do I mean by that? Well, here's what you get. If, if I take a couple of LiPos like this, when we plug them in parallel, imagine they all basically have a little connector between each other so if, if it's kind of like if you've seen those rubbish adverts on Facebook for that game where you've got those buckets and uh, like lines and it says which bucket fills first it's kind of like imagine these are buckets all connected together if you've got a bucket which is full and a bucket which is half empty the water will rush into the other buckets and try and equalize it and that's exactly what happens with the current so if you've got a battery that's got a lot of charge in it and a battery that, that's not got much charge in it the voltage from here is going to try and rush into this battery here and that can create a lot of amps so firstly um, you, you need to be careful about not doing that but secondly this is why you've got these fuses these are all 15 amp fuses and they're connected between the XC6 30 so if you do connect two batteries and it's got a lot of difference between the voltage and the voltage suddenly tries to rush from one to the other the fuse will blow and that will basically stop the battery from blowing up that's the theory anyway you've also got an extra safety measure here you've got these little leds and the idea here is and i'll show you this in a minute if you plug your balance lead in incorrectly it will light up some red to say hey this this is very wrong but let's let's connect this up to the charger and then we can talk about what you actually need to check before you start connecting batteries in uh, in parallel. So this is my uh, typical charger I use at the moment. This is a Hobbymate. I did use to use a dual port version of this guy, and it blew up. So I'm I'm down to this, and this is why I, I really do need to use um, parallel charging these days. Anyway, so we've got the XT60 and. Uh, balance connector here so I'm just going to plug these guys in like so so in order to avoid this big rush of current going between batteries what we need to check 
is that the cells are very close to each other. And what we mean by that is we check each cell needs to be within 0.1 volt and then each cell of each battery needs to be within 0.1 of a volt. So to do that, what I do is I take each balance lead individually. I don't connect anything up at the same time at this point. I plug it in the balance port like this and I have a look and we can see this is 3.82, 3.81, 3.82. So all around the 3.8 mark. And then I take the next battery and I'd plug that in. And I'd have a look at this and I see 3.81, 3.81, 3.81, that's all good. So these batteries, as all my batteries, when I finish using them, I put them into storage mode, which should put them at about 3.8. So it's no big surprise that these are all coming up similar. This one's slightly down instead of 3.81, it's 3.80, but again, we're well within that uh, 0 0.1 of a volt, so that's no problem. Now, I'll go and check the other ones uh, and make sure they're okay before I plug them in. If you've got one that's slightly out, if you've got a dodgy cell that you think's been balanced and has somehow dropped off, or you've got a battery you think's a bit dodgy, don't use it. Don't use it for this. Um, it might be fine to charge on its own. When you're, when you're dealing with charging parallel you need to be sure everything is absolutely lovely and kosher because the the way we charge it is all at once and a great big thing we need to make sure that's gonna go in all the cells individually so any dodgy batteries don't use them the other thing to do is of course make sure uh, technically you can use different capacities if you like for me i use the same capacity batteries obviously the same cell count and generally i try and use the same ones although if i've got similar batteries like these also 1.3s then I, I they're generally okay to go along with these ones as long you know as they meet the criteria about having the same cell voltage now very importantly when you connect batteries you need to plug the xd60s in first before you do anything else so in other words i'll be connecting one battery and then two batteries and three batteries before I do anything else. The reason I plug the XT60s in, because if there is a rush of current, these are great big thick wires. These can take it. These balance leads are not big thick wires. If there's a sudden rush of current into those, then we're gonna have problems. And I've had cheap and nasty parallel charge balls before which didn't have any of this protection and I'm sure I did it right and I plugged in a, a, my balance lead and the balance lead set on fire which is very frightening <laughs> indeed um, and I was off parallel charging for a long time before I got these ones with added safety. Now I want to show you one of the added safety features here to do that what I'm going to do is just take one of these out because the, the less of these the better. Now if you look a little bit closer you see we've got some nice notches in the balance connector so it's quite hard to screw these up but it's possible and we've already connected our xt 60s so we're now okay to connect up our balance leads i'm going to put one there and that is correct so we've got the the minus that end the plus that end now if you were to try and do this wrong it's quite hard because it's got the notches you can't just plug it there but you could plug it the wrong way around so i'm just trying to line this up so if you plug in and you suddenly see some red leds come on let's say you do that red led unplug it quickly because you've connected that incorrectly and there's no actual protection when you do that so you still might have some current flying around so red light unplug and sort yourself out and then go back look what you did wrong and then plug it in correctly, which would be there, like that. But I'm gonna unplug these now because I want to plug the rest of my batteries in. I have checked all the voltages are within 0.1, so, so you can see what I'm doing. And I have to say that these have got pretty reasonable balance leads. You might find some batteries like these ACs with very short balance connectors, but these do come with balance lead extensions but if you have got a bunch of batteries without the extensions these are really handy if you can get yourself a couple you don't have to sort of shove everything in it can be quite quite tricky to find out where you are with these sometimes anyway so i'm going to plug in the rest 
So that one goes there. And then over the other side. On that. One there. And one there. So that's our six plugged in. And as you might expect, the voltage hasn't changed, about 15.26, because all these batteries are storage charged and are all a similar value. Now we're happy that sort of equalized the voltage. There's no spikes going on there. Now is the time we can go ahead and start plugging in balance leads. So again, we do this carefully. We look for any red lights that suddenly pop up and we plug them all in. And you can see it's kind of, you can get yourself into a little bit of a spider's web when doing this. So it's something to really take your time at because this isn't something you want to screw up. But everything's good. If we look at the charger, we've still got a balance of 3.81, 3.809, 3 3.81. So they're all around the same, which is perfect because we don't want them trying to, trying to equalize. <clears throat> so what can you now charge these at? Well, this is now acting like one great big battery. So we've got three 1.3 amp LiPos at 4S. Now if we multiply 1.3 by 6, we get to 7.8. And that is what we can charge at. So if we go to our charger here, we can say we are 4S normal LiPo and we can charge at 7.8. And again, make sure you double check, make sure everything's happy, and we can start doing that. Obviously, if your charger doesn't go up that high, you know, you can charge that at five amps. It would just take a little bit longer, but that is a nice, safe charging ampage because we're doing everything at 1C just all at once. So the idea is this should take about 40 minutes-ish normally, maybe a little bit longer to balance instead of each battery taking 40 minutes. And of course, if you had a two port charger, you could use two of these if you, you know, had enough current to charge everything. So I'm gonna let those go. Um, but while we do that, we should talk a little bit about um, charging safety. At the moment, I've got this laid out here just so I can show it to you. This isn't my ideal charging scenario. Um, the, the best place I'd like to charge is outside. Cause you always gotta think about what happens if the worst happens, it goes wrong. If you're outside, nothing too bad can happen. Inside, um, metal box is good. Lots of people use ammo crates. They're a little bit, you just gotta make sure, you know, you're not messing things up when you've got a great big thing like this. Cause you don't wanna be sort of, you know, picking it up and dangling it. So a nice sort of wide metal box is nice. Basically, if a LiPo goes up, as long as it can't catch onto other things and spread the fire, it's not so bad. On a carpet is, is not my ideal scenario. Now, you've got things like LiPo bags. Quite, this does not feel like it's gonna stop a fire, I have to admit. It might subdue it a little bit, but I'm not completely convinced, but it's better than nothing. And for in the house, I've actually got a fire extinguisher, just in case. Now, I've never had a LiPo fire, and I really don't intend to. And it's the one thing I take very, very seriously. You might see me being a little bit gun ho leaving props on when I'm plugging in and stuff, but I do take charging very seriously. And when I'm not using my batteries, they're kept in a separate container outside away from the house just in case. You can't really be too careful with these. The other thing to do, of course, is when you're charging batteries, don't plug them in, start charging them and wander off. You need to be in the room with them. You don't want to be away. Now, if you're outside and you've got an outside plug, yes, you can perhaps leave them a little bit because if, you know, if they burst into flames, they're not going to do any damage. But in the house, doing anything, I'm always staying with these guys just in case, you know, I need to go there and, and sort something out. But anyway, that's going. You can see the charge is up to full whack there at 7.8 amps, and it's already put in 540, 550 milliamp hours. So let's leave this. Let's see how long it takes to charge all these up, and uh, we'll come back to it. 
as I said, probably about 40 minutes-ish. Well, I just heard a beep for charge done and it is at 36 minutes, which is pretty good for six batteries. So a little bit over an hour with these sorts of batteries to do, you know, that's 12 lipos and that's, that's enough for a good deal of ripping. Obviously it's gonna depend how much you can actually put through your charger, but even if you've got large batteries, it shouldn't be too much different. Sometimes larger batteries, depending on how they are, can take a little while to balance. It just depends on the internal resistance, but that's pretty good. And uh, I would take them off in exactly the same way, start the charger and sort of reverse it. So now I'm unplugging all my balance leads. The fan is still going in the charger. And then I'm unplugging the XT60s or XT30s if you had those ones connected. And we are all good to go. Now I'll give you the, the lowdown on this discharger as well, but if you've got a charger, use that. Basically, you will plug in a LiPo like this and you will select what cells you are, which is for us. As you can see, we've just um, charged this, so we are at 16.8, and this will attempt to discharge it back down to storage charge. However, to do this, it's just gonna use a reasonably small resistor to dissipate that voltage as heat, and that is very, very slow. I mean, like, uh, probably 24 hours to get that down. We've got a charger right here, so if we're gonna discharge it, I would use my storage charge and bring them down in that way. And if you can storage charge using this, instead of using that, uh, but same, same rules apply. You gotta make sure that all your cell voltages are within 0.1 volts of each other, and uh, then you can just discharge it as you would a normal battery. Normally, um, most chargers won't discharge beyond, you know, about two amps or something like that. So there's, they're not gonna go super quick, but sometimes it's more convenient if you've gone out, you've got a whole bunch of batteries that you um, didn't discharge uh, because the weather turned or something and you can put them in this. But often it's a bit easier just to go out and, you know, fly them or put them in something a little bit more high, high demand, which, which can bring the charge down a little bit quicker. So there you go, that was the HCRC Thor six port parallel charger and it does have this discharger at the end here, although, as I said, it's very, very slow. If you can use your actual charger to do it, you'll be much happier. And of course, they still sell the four port version if this is a little bit big. And I hope what I said about parallel charging was useful. You can do it quite safely. If you're gonna do it, just make extra time to double check, triple check everything. Really pay attention to what you're doing before you start stuff and be very careful about voltages and the audio plug stuff in, you should be fine. Anyway, this was kindly supplied by HLRC along with my nice red fleece and hat. So many thanks to them. And of course, you can find links to this one and the four port one down in the description if you want to check it out in more detail. I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.